Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Fun Fridays. So if you want to see how we do Fun Fridays around here, just keep watching. Okay. So, if you guys are new here, hello, my name is Renee and I am a homeschooling mom and we have been just having a blast this year. Um, now that my youngest, my son, is um, really kind of starting to get to that age to where he's wanting to have fun with us, um, but he's still not kind of to where he can do what, what my daughter is doing. Um, I thought Fun Fridays would be a lot more for us all together as a family so that we're not just focusing on book work. Um, we still count it as school days because we do educational things, but we don't do any book work on Fridays. Um, last year, I kind of just would wing Fun Fridays and I kind of fell out of it very quickly and lost inspiration. I'm kind of one of those people where um, I, I really like change and I really like um, uh, like loops or rotations so that every, every, it's always different um, and we're just uh, switching through different activities. So I made a list at the beginning before the year even started about things that I would like to do that are really fun that wouldn't really fit into our daily schedule Monday through Thursday um, for us to do together for Fun Fridays. So. How our Fun Fridays go is we do basically a normal morning time. So we do calendar, Pledge of Allegiance, and then we do our morning basket, um, which I have a video on. If you want to go check that out, I'll have it linked down below. After our morning basket, we normally would go into our book work, like our handwriting, language arts, math, things like that. But Fun Fridays, no book work. So um, I have a list here um, of my, so I made a list of um, things that I would like to do, right? So um, there was poetry, nature study, a field trip, a new sport or physical education, something like that, an educational game, and arts and crafts. So after I made those lists, so that is um, yeah, six things that we are going to be rotating through. Um, and, and then I, I wanted to show you kind of just some of the resources that I have for some of those things um, and tell you how I plan to do those. So um, for poetry, we do poetry tea time. And the main, um, I guess, spine that I'm using for this year is Tis the Season for Poetry. And this has poetry, um, it's one poem and activity per week each uh, for each month of the year. So January would have four poems with four different activities then same for february and so on so um for an example we already did um the one for august and it was um a poet a poem by christina rossetti and it was about stars so after i read the poem we looked at the map and saw where she was from where she lived and then we made bookmarks um that we decorated with constellations and when you could find them like what season you could find them on one side and then we listed the brightest stars and which um and where you could find them in the night sky and what season to best find them in so that was like a really fun activity for poetry tea time i set out the table i can do a whole yeah, I could do a whole video about how we do poetry tea time, but as a quick run through, I set up a whole table. We have cute little fancy tea cups and um, plates, and we don't drink tea. Um, our family doesn't drink tea, so we usually drink like apple juice or cranberry juice or milk. Um, I make a special treat. This past time we made muffins and we had milk, and I set out flowers on the table. I light candles, and it's just like a really special time we all gather around the table and then I get out all the poetry books that I have which right now isn't a lot but I have plans for getting more um, but I have two Shel Silver Silverstein books um, a William Wordsworth which is way above what their level is right now but just at, to have but just to have out I put that out and then I also put out um, this book here so I have all of my poetry books on the table the treats the flowers everything like that and then I have Everly go through um, a poetry book of her choice. She loves the Shel Silverstein books. And pick out a poem for me to read to her. Once she's older, she will read the poem. Um, and I read what she wants. If any, anyone else is participating in, in poetry tea time, then they pick a poem as well. Um, and then 
I read the poem, the one poem from here, and then we do the activity. So that's how we do poetry. Um, and like I said, we rotate these through. So one Friday we'll do poetry, the next Friday we'll do the next subject. Um, so the next one is nature study. So I have a couple things here. I have sharing nature with children. So this was like a full on book talking about the importance of nature with children and then different games and activities to help them get closer to nature. And it has the age ranges for the activities, where you need to go, how much time you might need, any materials you might need. Um, so I'm going to kind of switch off between these two books. This is the the Kids Nature Book, 365 Indoor Outdoor Activities and Experiences. So this has one activity or experience every day of the year. Um, so it has, you know, here March 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Um, so I thought I would switch off between these books. We're going to first start with this. And I think the first thing we're going to do is learn about fog. And it was to go walk in fog, but we hardly ever get fog here. So I highly doubt. I mean, I'll look outside in the morning, but I highly doubt there will be fog. But we'll, what we'll do is we'll learn about fog. Maybe I'll find like a cool experience to uh, experiment to make fog. Um, and that'll be like our nature study to learn about fog and how it's made and why it's there and things like that um so i thought i would one um nature uh study we would do this book the next nature study day we would do this book you know switch on on and off okay what else? uh field trip so for field trips i i kind of just try to plan about three to four weeks in advance of my fun friday so i can see what we might be talking about in school that week um, history wise or science wise or language arts wise or whatever um, or if there's going to be like um, a famous person's birthday or a historical event or a holiday anything like that so I try to see if there's anything around that day that I could base my um, field trip around if there's not then I'm just going to kind of make one up to go do something educational for the first field trip I planned there wasn't really anything around what we were doing so I thought it would be really fun to start out the year the first field trip to go to the library and maybe do a little scavenger hunt in the library to teach her how to look for books in the library and um, and then our the library that we go to has a really giant field next to it it's huge and it's beautiful and I thought we could have a picnic um, uh, after we go to the library or before which whichever um, so that would be like our field trip and that will always change um, so that is another fun Friday activity. Then the next thing would be um, PE or new sport. And the thing I have right now is Homeschool Family Fitness, the Complete Physical Education Curriculum Guide by Dr. Bruce Whitney. So it's for grades K through 12. This has um, lesson plans in it. It has a full on like schedule, like week one, you could do this, week two, you could do this, week three, you know, and then it does like, um, you would do this for preschool through grade three and then, or this, this activity is good for K through 12 or, you know, so that it gives you like a simple guide to, um, do that. So we're just going to pick, like, probably we'll just go in order from week one on, um, since we are only doing it about once every six weeks. Um, we won't be doing everything in here, but we'll be at least learning different things. The first thing we're going to do is a fitness test, and then we'll do a fitness test at the end of the year and see, who, you know, if we improved. And we're going to do this all together as a family. So most likely we'll be doing our physical education um, in the evenings after my husband's home or possibly on a Saturday um, if that evening is, like, really busy. Um because I would like to do all of this together as a family and to get fit and play and learn different skills together as a family. Um, and I also have lots of good ideas. I, there's another homeschool fitness book that I want to get. There's a yoga for kids book. There are a lot of really fun things that I could cycle through. Um, and I'm doing this on fun Fridays. So it'd be like once every six weeks because when I tried to do like a PE last year, or the year before, I can't remember. It was like super overwhelming. I didn't know what I was doing. I tried to do it every day and it was just not working. So um, I decided this year we're gonna start slow and we'll do it on fun Fridays. Then maybe next year we'll move it to a rotation in the um, in the morning basket. So we'll do it once a week, maybe a little bit less, but it'll be definitely more than once every six weeks. Just to like dip my toes in and see, to make sure that we really can do this physical fitness because for some reason that's it's really like, daunting to me um 
Then the fifth thing that I'm gonna rotate through is an educational game. So after our morning basket, no book work, we'll just jump right into a game. And I got this to get us started. This is Sight Words Level 1 Bingo. Um, and I thought this would just be really fun to play. And uh, and I have a lot of different ideas too that I'm gonna get uh, so we can not always play the same game. And um, yeah, so educational game for another fun Friday. Now the last thing is arts and crafts. Right now I only have one book to kind of pull things from. There's always Pinterest, you know. But um, this is Creative Arts and Crafts Projects, and I got this from The Good and the Beautiful. Um, a lot of these things can be themed um, seasonally or um, like holidays, or they could just be random. Like this one is like a pumpkin thing we could do in the fall. Um, I also have a whole list of um, fun art um, books. Um, and things a lot geared more towards toddlers for my son that I also want to get and incorporate into the arts and crafts days. Um, but yeah, we're going to just do a really fun arts and craft that, you know, we will intentionally do like a good, uh, well done craft. And that's it. That's it, guys. That those are that's what I have planned for Fun Fridays this year. Those things will just continue to rotate throughout the year. And if I have those planned, you know, somewhat in advance, I have a good feeling that this will really work this year. And I'm really excited about it. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.